Hello everybody, this is David. Welcome back to my channel. Well, this video is a continuation of our series, Hamartiology, the study of sin. And we're currently looking at what we have received uh, through what Christ has done for us. So the third thing that Christ brought to us, the thing that we have received is redemption. Now, it's the entire result of what the Lord Jesus obtained for us by his going to the cross and dying for us. Now let's think of it in the more exact sense that in his self-offering on the cross, he was ransoming and redeeming us and our service for God. That's an amazing thought. Now there are two words mainly used for this in the New Testament, to redeem or ransom and to buy or purchase and their effect is the same. Redeemed means ransomed or bought with a price. Now let's try and understand uh, what this word ransom means which the Lord effected when as he says he gave his life as a ransom for many as we read in Matthew chapter 20 verse 28. It was not that he paid a price for our sin or rendered an equivalent for our guilt only. Now it is true that towards God and in respect uh, of our sin, his offering of himself was propitiatory or expiatory for sin and instead of sinners. That is, he made things right between us and God. So we, we looked at that under what we looked at in the last video under propitiation, but it is more towards us, it is redemptory, it is a ransoming of us. He made atonement for our sins, yes, but he also obtained redemption for ourselves. You are not your own, for you are brought with a price, as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Let's have a look then at the full meaning of the redemption obtained for us by the Lord Jesus through the ransom price of his own life, which he paid down, which he laid down. It bought us. It was not a price which merely bought liberation from punishment or brought up or got rid of the penalty of sin. If ever it's so thought of or taught, such teaching would lower the idea of God's free grace and be in some danger of turning grace into an occasion for sin. Also, furthermore, it did not merely buy us off, far less did it buy us out or let us go? It rather brought us in, brought us for Christ and for his Father. Hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. No doubt we can truly and scripturally say that there are some bonds and stripes it brought us from under. Firstly, he redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us as we read in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. He was sent forth, born of a woman, and made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. Again, as we read in Galatians chapter 4, verse 5. That is to say, by that glorious ransom of his, sin and death are stripped of their captives. We're no longer captive. All this was to the end that we might receive the adoption of sons, might become members of a redeemed family, might enter into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. More exactly still, it brought us back. We were at first the property of the Lord, our maker, children of God by creation in his image. Sin brought us into bondage and sold us into the slavery of Satan. As we read in John chapter 8, verse 34, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, by his cross, makes us free, because he wins us again to God and his Father. So redemption is the Lord's getting back his own, in a way which makes them twice his own, and doubly dear, twice, twice, firstly, he made us, and secondly, he bought us. Hallelujah. Now, notice the defect of some uncommon ways of putting this. 
we might rightly try to teach by examples and illustrations, but we must see that they're not shallow. A generous person buys a bird in a cage, then opens the cage and lets it free. A philanth philanthropist buys a slave in a public slave auction and to give the slave his liberty, who then out of gratitude freely serves his liberator for life. Now, these illustrations are not altogether useless. They do picture the deliverance and the gratitude which may follow the payment of a ransom, but they leave out an important part of Christ's way of delivering us by his ransom. They leave out the re, the buying back, the our salvation by the cross is not mere exemption, far less emption, it is redemption. When we take the Bible way of illustrating God's love in our salvation, we get deep and true view, views of it. For example, let's have a look at the great historical illustration taken from God's deliverance of, Ever, of Israel out of Egypt at the first and is bringing the two tribes out of the Babylonian captivity near the close of the Old Testament history. In both these instances, the redemption was God's getting back his own out of bondage and captivity. Or, let's have a look at this, the Hebrew system of repurchase set up by Moses. Lands or persons under that system were never sold, but with a right which even the seller could not part with to buy back at any time when he or his friends could raise the money. Even at the worst, the sale was only until the next Jubilee year, that is the 50th year. Then what had been sold must return to Jehovah, whose it was all the while. Now, there's one more thing that we should see. The right of redeeming land or persons lay not with the debtor only, but with his next of kin, his kinsman redeemer, which is one of the titles of Christ, failing him with the next again until one was reached who could and would redeem. For example, the story of Boaz and Ruth. Also that of Jeremiah with his cousin's field at Anatoth, as we read in Jeremiah 32. So this illustrates not only the meaning of the ransom and the bearing of redemption, but the rights of the Redeemer. This helps to clear away those objections to the doctrine of the cross, which speak as if the doing and dying of another were accepted instead of us. Our Lord Jesus is not another in the sense of being a stranger. The Lord says, my lost children of men were sold away from me by their sin. But there is a way to bring back my banished, to save my sheep which were lost. I give for them my only begotten son, who, becoming man, is also their next of kin. That with his own life, that with his own life, he may buy them back to me whose they are and from whom, whom and from whose service they have been estranged. Let him do this. Who has the best right to do it? Their kinsman redeemer from everlasting. As we read in Isaiah uh, 63 verse 16. Was it 43 verse 16? So that's amazing. I'm going to stop the video there because there's so much to think about. The next video, we're going to look at the last thing that God, through Christ, has brought to us. So thank you for joining me in this video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.